unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Welcome to Cleansing Fire. And come on as you audibly love God with your voice and with your expressions to him as we enter into worship. This is the day that the Lord has made and we choose to rejoice and be glad in it. Brethren, lift your hands, lift your voice, make a joyful noise unto our King because he has granted us another day in his presence and we worship him in the beauty of holiness. Hallelujah. You unravel me with your melody. You surround me with the song, with deliverance from my enemies till all my fears are gone. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child. child of God. Oh, bless the Lord, oh, my soul, oh, my soul. Worship his holy name. We're gonna sing like never before. Oh, my soul, come on and worship his holy name. Oh, bless the Lord, oh, my soul, oh, my soul. Worship His holy name. Oh, children, sing like never before. Oh, my soul, we'll worship His holy name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have won the victory. Come on, say hallelujah. Have won it all for me. Lord, death could not hold you down. No, no. You are the risen king. My God, you're seated in majesty. Oh, and you are the risen king. Hallelujah. Have won the victory. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, you have won it all for me. Father, death could not hold you down. No, Lord, you are the risen King. Come on and declare it. You're seated in majesty. Yes, you are. You are the risen King, and you have no rival, you have no equal, now and forevermore you reign. Yours is the power, yours is the glory, yours is the name above all names. Call that name, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. oh yes. Call his name, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. my God, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, what a beautiful name it is, what a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is, nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Power in the name. Healing in the name, call that name, call his name, my God, Jesus, 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 hallelujah, that name that is above every other name, that everything should bow under that name, in heaven and in earth and things beneath the earth, hallelujah. Father, we worship you, Lord. No other name, no other name to the Lamb on the throne. We bow before you. We love and adore you. Let the Lord change your atmosphere and your environment. 
as we walk into the Holy of Holies right now. You are here, moving in this place. I worship you, Daddy God, I worship you. You are here, moving in a midst. I worship you, I worship you, Lord, you're here, turning lives around, I worship you, I want to worship you. Tell him who he is now. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Yes, God. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. you back together. I worship you. Yes, you're here. Healing every soul. I worship you. Father will worship you. Come on, tell him who he is. We make a miracle work, a promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who who he is today, he is. We make a miracle work, a promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Wipe away my tears and my broken heart, you're the answer to it all. Jesus, you're wiping away every tear. You're mending our broken hearts. You're the answer to it all. Jesus, you are. We make a miracle work, a promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Come on and declare who he is right now. He is. We make a miracle work, a promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God, that is Come on, lift up holy hands and declare. I worship you. I worship you, my God. I worship you. Jesus, out of a heart of praise, I worship you, God. I worship you. I worship you. We continue just to love on you today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Accept the praises of your people right now. Thank you, Jesus. And as we delve into your word, Father, we release understanding. We release comfort. We release encouragement and godly information to your people right now. In the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. 
Hallelujah. Again, we welcome you to Cleansing Fire, and we are so glad that you made it. God brought you through another week so that you can hear his voice one more time. You can touch him one more time, and we can rejoice as the beloved in Christ assemble together, giving him glory. On today, we as the body of Christ, the church of Jesus, we celebrate at the table of the Lord, the communion table. This was very special to Jesus on his time on earth. And the Lord's table for the believer holds everything we need to sustain us in this life. We are reminded of the priceless foundation of faith. We are empowered to serve and strengthened with the assurance of our blessed hope in Christ Jesus. All of these things are celebrated and it makes this table and this coming together holy. It makes it cherished and valued in the life of each believer. Every individual believer are given res res responsibilities to uphold. And if we decide to become disciplined to these beliefs that God has given, then successful Christian living will be attained. Communion must not be approached as a ritual or rite or tradition, but it must be approached as an experience, as a sacred rite of the child of God. We must now reprogram ourselves to reevaluate our responsibilities when we come together at this table and discipline ourselves as individuals to make up the true church of God. We have laid so much responsibility on others, on leaders, that we have excused and justified our acts of indifference concerning Christianity. And coming to the Lord's table is one of them. We have indulged in semantics and hype, structures, associations, and every conceivable thing that will allow us to pass the buck, that will allow us to skirt from our personal responsibility as a believer in Christ. You see, the Christian life is founded and catalyzed and lived through individual responsibility and accountability. If this is not upheld, now you will be called. If it's not upheld now, you will be called upon at some point in time to provide evidence of this discipline either in this life or in eternity. So let us examine the table of the Lord. Examine this whole idea of communion. Let us get past the rite and the ritual and the tradition and understand on an individual level what is it that we must bring to the table and what we must take away from it, what we must discipline ourselves to, what we must obtain and attain to as individual believers. It's not about your brother or your sister or others or your leader. It's about you this morning coming to God's table with that responsibility. Communion reminds us of our individual responsibility for salvation. Conversion comes through repentance. When we make a purposeful decision to accept God's provision for us, it is the greater it is the part of a greater plan called salvation. This work of salvation will always begin and end at the cross. Hallelujah. Where everything we need to live a righteous life has already been given freely to each and every one of us whenever we need it. Every provision was made at the cross. That's why we call it the perfect work 
of Jesus because that's what it was. It was complete. It was perfect. And everything in our Christian walk we will ever need, we need to come back to the cross. We need to turn our eyes on the work that was done on the cross. The work of Christ on the cross was so complete. And every single step we make in this Christian walk will always be dependent on every aspect of it. We must never live in any way that would undervalue what Christ has done. In every part of our lives, and we would need healing. And healing is found at the cross. Some part of our lives, we would need deliverance. Deliverance was made possible at the cross. At some part of our lives, we will need forgiveness of sin and, and, and anything else. And God dealt with it once and for all at the cross. Whatever we need, we need solace, we need strength, we need encouragement. When we look at the cross, we see that Jesus took upon himself everything in order to provide everything else to us. 1 Corinthians 6.20 says, For you were bought with a price. So glorify God in your body. Stop undervaluing what Jesus has done for you. 1 Peter 1, 18 to 19 says, Live in this way, knowing that you were not liberated or bought by perishable things like silver or gold from the empty lifestyle you inherited from your ancestors. For we were born in sin and shapen in iniquity, and we were lost until we found purpose with Christ, purpose in Christ. And that purpose was bought with an imperishable value. Instead, the Bible says, you were liberated by the precious blood of Christ like that of a flawless, spotless lamb. When you have a treasure, when you have something that that, that is even sentimental, my God, it is priceless. You can't put a price on it. You hold it close. You take charge over it. You guard that treasure. First Peter 3.18, for Christ Christ also suffered once for our sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit. We must understand that we were flailing without Christ. We were flailing without a, a direct connection to God. We were outside, my God, of our purpose and out of what we have been created for and with the perfect work of Jesus. When we come and we remember our salvation, remember what Jesus suffered on the cross. It tells us that with this precious price, he redeemed us and reconciled us back to God, brought us back to where we need to be. Philippians 2.12 says, work out your own salvation with fear and with trembling. As we come around the table, my God, let us look towards the cross. The songwriter says, in the cross, be my glory ever, till my raptured soul shall find rest beyond the river. Everything I need in this life, everything I need to help me, to empower Power me to be provided to me for me was done on the cross. That perfect sacrifice, that blood that was shed for me. My God, those stripes that was laid on the back of Jesus, the piercing on his side makes it possible for us to be called the church, the ecclesia, the called out ones. Everything that we lay our foundation on today is at the cross. That's why he said, do this in remembrance of me. Remember Calvary. Remember what he suffered. Remember what he went through. And my God, as he hung on that cross, it was not incomplete. He said the words, 
it is finished. You don't have to go through it. You don't have to suffer through it because the word, the good news is it is finished. For God so loved the world. He gave his only son that whosoever believes and accepts my God and embraces all that he has done, you will have everlasting life. You will have life here and to come. So we need to work it out. My God, are you flailing? Are you suffering? Are you distracted? Turn your eyes to that crimson flow, to that precious cross on Calvary, and you will find all that you need. Communion empowers us with individual responsibility towards each other. Individual responsibility. Not to get you on a committee. Not to, 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 for somebody to tell you to do something. Your individual conviction, unction, and function must be towards others. When true conversion takes place, when true transformation takes place, it's not about you. I don't know what gospel you have been hearing lately. I don't know what you have involved, what doctrine you have involved yourself with. But Christianity and the good news of Christ and the teaching of his word for his kingdom has everything to do with service to others. When we have come around this table, the Bible says we must consider each other. Christianity has never been about self. This doctrine suddenly about Christianity being self-serving. God, you're going to bless me. You're going to bless my husband. You're going to bless our children. You're going to bless, bless us and nobody else. Touch me. Heal me. Minister to me. No, 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 no. That's not Christianity. That is a selfish kind of, Christ, kind of belief. But it is not the truth of Christianity. We are trying to live Christianity within the worldly standards of being self-serving. The world tells you, look out for number one. The true and only message around the Lord's table is the commandment with which Jesus instructed. To love, give, and serve each other even more than ourselves. Like we would want it. A subtle deception of selfishness has been entertained in and at some point of our Christian lives. And most times it arises out of conflict, injustice, hurt, disagreement. And we end up building all these walls of division. So the purpose of God's table becomes corrupted. Like we read in 1 Corinthians eleven twenty, We are not coming in earnest. We are not coming in genuine concern for each other. In 1 Corinthians eleven twenty says, Now then, when you come together, it is not the Lord's supper you eat. For as you eat, each of you goes ahead without sharing his meal. While one remains hungry and another gets drunk. My God. He was talking to the Corinthians. He says, you're coming and you're saying you're having this love feast and you're remembering the Lord and remembering what he's done. But you're not waiting for each other. You, your greed has taken you over. Your selfishness has taken you over. Everyone to their own selves. Romans 12, 10 says, be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourself. I don't know what you think, but Jesus, this is who Jesus is coming back for. He's not coming back for a selfish people. He's not coming back for a people who only tends to themselves. John 13, 34, Jesus himself says, a new commandment I give to you. Love one another as I have loved you, so you also must love one another. This is the new commandment. Moses gave his list of commandments. But Jesus said, if we follow the instructions,
instruction of this one commandment, we will cover all the other commandments. When he says, thou shalt not kill, if you're loving someone else more than yourself, you will cherish and value their lives. Thou shalt not covet your neighbor's goods, your neighbor's wife, commit adultery, things like that. There must not be envy and greed. If you love your neighbor like yourself, you would not want to hurt them. You would not want to steal from them. Come on, somebody. Honor your parents, your mother and father, and your days will be long in the land. If you're loving them like how you're loving yourself, you would not want to see them out in the cold. You will not want to see them suffering. You would not want to see them in lack. Come on. Hallelujah. He said, so this is the commandment that we love one another. And when we come around the table of the Lord, it's not about your sister or your brother's duty to do it. It's your duty. First Thessalonians 4, 9. Now about brotherly love. You do not need anyone to write to you. Because you yourselves have been taught by God to love one another. When you come into Christianity, when you come into the fullness of the kingdom, it is his love that draws you. It is his love that overwhelms you. That's why the Bible says, who can separate us from the love of God in our present state? He didn't say fix yourself and then come. He said, while my God, you're suffering while you're confused while you're in your torment and your crisis I'm loving you I am loving you and this is how we need to love one another you don't need anybody to tell you that's what he's saying you don't need anybody to write to you and instruct you because as a child of God, we must operate in love. Love is our motivation. Love is our foundation. Not lip service, not saying it and not following up. Loving word and loving deed. It is time to put aside the pretense, my God, and be truly filled with the love of God. Church, individual believer, it is time to put away all these pretenses. Ah, we tell people we're praying for them, but you know you're not praying for them. You tell them good day and good morning and you're happy for a little one or two hours in church because you cannot handle too many people around you. Because why? They don't think like you. They don't act like you. They're probably not on your level. And we show our air and we show our snobbery and our scorn. God is saying at the table, reevaluate yourself examine that's why he said let every man examine himself and we need to demonstrate giving rather than taking building rather than breaking concern rather than conflict holding each other higher than ourselves than holding a grudge first corinthians 10 17 says because there is one bread we who are many are one body for we all partake of the one bread. Hebrews 10, 27 says, and let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works. Don't stir up strife. Don't stir up confusion. My God, if your agenda and intention is with negativity, it is not God's agenda. It is not God's table manners for his table. He is saying we have come together to encourage each other, to stir up each other, to put a fire under each other for good works and for love. Unity is an individual responsibility. Unity, don't wait for some pastor to call you to do it. Don't wait for somebody to come up with the idea. Don't let us be like little herds following, following all the time. Listen to me. Unity starts with you. Bridging the gap starts with you. And I'm trying to drill this into every believer. You are the church, not for yourself, not for selfish purposes and reasons, not for self-promotion, but you are the church to reflect the kingdom and the agenda of God in the earth. And what is that agenda? Love 
and unity. And you must show that unity. The purity of God's love must move us, remove us immediately from the presence of anything that looks or feels or sounds divisive in nature. My God, you don't have time to have a corrupt conversation. You don't, you, your, your spirit cannot keep you in a conversation that is vulgar and perverse. Your spirit cannot keep you in the presence of people who are speaking wickedness come on somebody but unity my god must be so indelible and so seeded and instilled in us uh, that anything of a divisive nature we immediately walk away from we immediately put a stop to we immediately shine the light of god and expose it in Jesus name. You see how serious communion is? When you've been just taking this bread and this wine and no, 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 no. It's not about ritual. It's about fellowship. It's about relationship. It's about concern for the other person's welfare. Communion must encourage and strengthen our individual responsibility for eternity. Mind you, Everything that I'm talking about, it's an individual responsibility. Let each person examine himself. No time to point fingers. No time to look down on anybody else. No time to pass judgment. But this is your reasonable service to God. My God, whether you're locked in your house, whether you're sitting with the brethren, whether you, you are on Zoom, whatever you're doing, you must be concerned. You must be concerned with everyone else. Else. And communion gives you the individual responsibility for eternity. It reminds us of our blessed hope. Listen to me. Within this pandemic, we have found that the onus of righteous living is not with another individual. It is not somebody uh, where, where, where we can just pacify ourselves with a our service, whether we're listening to the pastor or not. The onus is upon each and every one of us to get it right. The onus is upon each and every one of us to, to be disciplined, to walk in the way of God. The onus and the responsibility is on you, my friend. First Corinthians 1126 for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes my God right there he says listen you're doing this with a hope you're doing this looking unto Jesus the author and finisher we're doing this with a futuristic point of view it doesn't matter what is happening to you at present when you come around the table of the Lord you are encouraged because you know this is not the end you know that this is not the final thing but we are looking forward to something greater we have a blessed hope some of us we there, there, there is a quality of Christian rising up and they have forgotten that we this world is not our home our be all and end all is not here we are in this world my friend but we are not of this world we're just passing through but while we're passing through we must make use of the time. We must occupy until the master comes. There is a hope that our master who we celebrate, my God, he's about to come again. He's about to put in his appearance again. First Corinthians 4, 5 said, therefore, 
Judge nothing before the appointed time. Wait until the Lord comes. He will bring to light what is hidden in darkness and will expose the motives of men. At that time, each will receive his praise from God. Philippians 1.10 says, For I want you to understand what really matters. Ah, is Paul talking to somebody today? So that you may live pure and blameless lives until the day of Christ's return. That is what really matters. What really matters, my God, is not how you look or how many people you know, but how you live, how you carry about the love of Jesus and how you distribute it in the world that he has given you. Philippians 1, 6 says, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you. He will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Matthew 26, 29, Jesus said, but I tell you, I will not drink from this fruit of the vine from now on until the day when I drink it with you in my father's kingdom. We have a hope. We are the bride and the bridegroom is preparing for us and he has made a covenant. He said, I am not going to drink this wine. I'm not going to come into any kind of satisfaction or contentment until you are with me. When people, my God, we toast and we drink and we eat together, it's a time of love. It's a time of sharing. It's a time of celebration. He says, listen, I am preparing so that when I sit to celebrate with you, it will be forever and forever. Forever. John 16, 22. So also you have suffered now. But Jesus said, I will see you again. And your hearts will rejoice. And no one will take away your joy. What has taken your joy? What has broken your heart? What has severed your ties? He said, listen to me. At this table, I'm giving you the hope that my peace I give unto you. Not as the word give I unto you. But this is something that will not pass away and that will lead you to my appearing. That will lead you for us to reconcile and reconnect again. We have the blessed hope when Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. If you believe in God, believe also in me. For in my Father's house, hallelujah, there are many mansions. And if it were not so, I would have told you so. But I'm going. You see, he didn't just leave us just like that. He didn't leave us desperate. He didn't leave us helpless. He said, but I go to prepare a place for you that where I am, my God, you will be there also. He said, I want you to know that where I am, you are going to be you're not lonely. You're not by yourself, saints of God. We are not, my God, weak and desperate and defeated in this world. But as we trudge and we press towards the mark of the high call and that prize, as we head to the finish line, as we come together, serving each other, loving each other, caring for each other, as we look to the cross, we know Oh, that that same Jesus that same Jesus he's coming back again he's coming back to receive us to himself he's not sending an angel he's not passing the duty he says I love you so much I'm going to come myself I'm going to come in the clouds keep your eyes on the eastern sky no man knows the hour or the day but we feast at this table with the blessed hope blessed assurance as Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. I'm an heir of salvation. Hallelujah. And I have been purchased by blood and I'm born of his spirit. 
spirit and washed in his blood. I'm seeing him one more time. It will be worth it all, saints of God, when we see Jesus. You see, life trials will seem so small when we see Christ. And I dare you and I encourage you that one glimpse of his dear face, every pressure, every tear, every wound, every scar will be erased when we see Christ. This is our hope. This is your hope. Hold on to Jesus. Hold on to what he has given you. Hold on and do the work faithfully because the hour draweth nigh. Let us come together. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, we give God praise. Lift your hands and worship him. I feel this word as we come together, as we come together. As we come together, no more rites, no more rituals, no more tradition. But Jesus said, this is a love feast. I gave my life for thee. What hast thou given for me? All I need is your time. All I need, my God, is to be with you in that presence. All I need for you to do is to receive from me at this table so that you can be blessed and be a blessing to others. Oh, how have you viewed the table? Have you taken it for granted? Have you undervalued the table of the Lord? But it is far precious than silver and gold, what we choose to do at this time. Right now, I want you to get your bread and your wine ready as we get ready to come to the table. There's somebody who have heard the word and you said, my God, pastor, I want to feel that fellowship. I want to surrender at the cross because I've been carrying this burden for too long. I need Jesus. I need to have a hope in this hopeless world. I want you to know that Jesus is right there, ready to turn your life around. Just put your hand on your heart. And lift the other hand and say, My Heavenly Father, I come to you weary and tired of the life that I now live. Forgive me of my sin. Ease me of this burden. And transform my life completely through the power of the cross. Through the power of what you have done for me. And I accept it now. I accept you as my Lord, my leader, and my Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Welcome into the kingdom of God. At this time, we're getting ready to just read the word. Get your bread and your wine. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you, the Lord Jesus. On the same night he was betrayed, he took the bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and he said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, as we lift this bread, healing is the children's bread. And under this presence and this anointing, oh God, everything that has hindered us, everything, Lord Jesus, that has taunted our progress in you we move it out of the way and we partake in your perfect provision receiving perfect healing re perfect cleansing perfect life in Jesus name amen let's partake of the bread hallelujah hallelujah Hey, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. 
Hallelujah. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Father, thank you that this blood that flows from Calvary Stream is still flowing to every sinner, to every failure in our lives. It is still flowing where man cannot reach, where science cannot touch. And oh God, your forgiveness is flowing. Your blessing is flowing. Your new covenant to make us the righteousness of God in Christ is flowing upon us right now. Oh, this blood that gives us strength from day to day, we declare it will never lose its power. So we drink and God, we become one with you as your son is at one with you in Jesus name. Hallelujah. Come on, lift your hands and give him praise. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for your blood. Oh, worthy is the lamb. Worthy is the lamb. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Oh, God, we remember those who are hurting today. We remember those, oh, God, who have suffered violence. We remember those who cannot help themselves. We take this communion and stand in the gap for them. And we ask for your healing to flow. We ask for your second chances to flow. We ask for your deliverance to flow to them right now. Every hurting person, oh, God, minister to them right now. Father, those who are suffering lack and scarcity, let them encounter and be ministered to, O oh God, as we stretch out our hands to give, as you use us as mighty vessels. Do it today, God. Do it today, most holy God. Somebody help me praise him. Somebody help me worship as healing is coming forth in our bodies, in our minds, in our spirits, in our marriages, in our families, in our nations. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Blessed be your name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. It was so good to share this time of the Lord's table. Go in peace. Stay in safety under his protection, for he has guaranteed and provided all those things in his perfect work for you and I. And I want you to know that our hands are stretched out to you. We continuously pray and lift you up before the Lord. Reach out to somebody who needs help this week. Somebody who needs to feel the love of Jesus and do it knowing that we have a blessed hope. Join us on Thursday night for our prayer point. My God, God is just doing wonderful and miraculous things. Send us your request uh, on all the forums that you see appearing on your screen and let us or just testify of the goodness of God. We have some good, great things in store for you. God has great things in store for you. So stay with us here on Cleansing Fire. I am Reverend Nicole Balasing Holder, your pastor. We love you. We care about you. And we are genuinely praying for you. So on behalf of all of us, you have a great, a successful, a purposeful and a miraculous week in Jesus name. God bless you. Mm -hmm.